Okay, I guess we're live. What a trip. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Saturday Morning Marketing Smarties. My name is Roland, and I am presently joined by Molly Youngblood Geiger, that is my only constituent, uh, talking to me through this twilight zone uh, of a day that I'm having. So here we are. And uh, Molly, why don't you say hi and tell us how the weather is in your neighborhood? Sure. Uh, hi, my name is Molly Yumbla Geiger, and I'm out of Jacksonville, Florida. The weather is beautiful outside today here in sunny Florida. Uh, it's in the low 80s, and kind of a nice uh, breeze going out on outside. Uh, we did have a little bit of some weather over the last few days. We had a tropical storm blow through, but uh, nothing too bad. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to be here and talk about uh, Google Slides this afternoon and uh, some other topics that we have lined up. Sounds good. And uh, it's kind of a hodgepodge of stuff. Uh, people who have watched this show for any length of time know that sometimes I just got to, I have to just vent about what I'm experiencing in the internet marketing world and and advertising and so, so forth. And um, so I've got a confirmation from Bill and WeWake that we are indeed broadcasting live. I believe they're watching from the unified chat page, which is basically my focus. I'm trying to drive people to that. So when we do the unified chat page, uh, I, at the last minute, we can grab the URL for that and then add it to the event details in YouTube and everywhere. Uh, I'm, we're still trying to figure out how to, how to add Karen to the green room. We're having some different uh, communication difficulties. Hang on. <laughs> really kind of funny. So Karen is in a different green room waiting for us to show up. So um, I'm going to try once again to get her to join us. So hang on, folks. And I'll send her the link. And I apologize for the overtime on this. And hopefully we'll be able to make it up by having a decent show anyway. And apparently there are few, four viewers. And uh, if you're, so if you're viewing the event uh, like Bill and We Wake, I hope that you will check in and let us know that you're there just so that we know who's 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 listening and indeed commenting if you'd like but uh, we're asking Karen to join us and she might very well do that momentarily she's trying apparently but um, I don't know why she's uh, not able to cut in Well, while Roland's trying to uh, get Karen into the uh, green room, I just quickly want to mention, I know one of the uh, topics that we've kind of gone over the last couple of weeks were, you know, how are we going to integrate uh, more activity engagement within uh, YouTube now that Hangouts on Air is on YouTube. Um, earlier last week, they announced, Google announced that they are going to now have YouTube communities. So apparently what we had discussed about them kind of modifying YouTube in a sense to accommodate more interaction, uh, they're going to do. So I'm really excited about that um, just because uh, I think that's important to have that, you know, to have that ability to interact with people, um, you know, post pictures or comments, things of that nature. And uh, I think that kind of solves our, our problem. I know we're st it's still in beta right now, so it has it's not live across the you know across the board. Uh, there are a few public uh, figures that are using it. Um, they seem to like it so far. They're able to inter interact with their fans and you know, sharing uh, pictures, uh, gifts, music clips, just text content. So I th I think that's going to be uh, interesting to see how that pans out for our show. Um, and how we're going to be able to bring some more engagement. Yeah, that, that is going to be interesting. And uh, one of the focus, focus points for what we broadcast and what we 
teach and what we develop in this show is how to build engagement. And uh, in, in that, we have to redefine what engagement is. But I'm going to take a, a pause for the moment and ask um, Molly if you would try uh, forwarding Karen the green room link from your location and see if that does anything different than what I've given her because she's in a completely different hangout. Sure. Uh, give me a couple minutes to do that. And while yeah. I do that, if you want to go ahead and start the, uh, the slide. Yeah, I, I want to talk about a few things. And uh, basically, um, vent my thoughts and things, and also share with the people um, exactly what what we're studying here, because this show is based on education. So uh, that's what I like to do: is give give people an education as best we can as to what the most recent uh, highlights of the industry are internet marketing and communication and social media so here I'm sharing with you uh, what we're going to be basically talking about today and we are going to be exploring some basic tools for one thing uh, the slides uh, Google slides recently made this adaptation of what they do and they have a, a laser pointer tool built into slides so I'd like to show that to you right now and uh, let's see, I'll go here and then turn on my laser pointer and watch the screen as all of a sudden, we I've got a laser pointer. And of course, people are asking all the time, uh, how did you do that? You know, what, and usually it's a plugin or it's an application or something. And this is built right into Google Slides, so you don't have to, to uh, do anything special. You just basically turn on the tool and the other thing about uh, th this tool is when you're making when you're making slides you can add pictures like I did here you can add various tutorial things and you can conduct a show and then in each each different viewing you can add your laser pointer to point out the various things so here I am pointing out the points of what I'm talking about today we're going to talk about the laser pointer and then from there, we're going to go down to a concept called deliver what you promise. So I'm going to go into that in just a little bit here. And I'm going to be talking about delivering what you promise in your marketing or in your life. Then the, the next thing that we're going to do is do another tour of Windows AeroSnap or Snap and uh, some of the ways you can manipulate Windows so that you can watch the programs better and so you can broadcast better. By the way, uh, broadcasting is a word that's probably going to be uh, dissected and regurgitated several times because I believe that broadcasting may not be the term that's most applicable. I think narrowcasting may be much, much more applicable. So we'll see what happens. And then after that, we're going to allow people to give feedback and observations and any questions that you have regarding what we're doing today because indeed we're sampling as a second round this entire environment of um, unified chat and the chat stream and by the way we have Lowell Ann Fulsang who's joined us and I appreciate uh, that you're you're stopping in and seeing what's going on with us today and so thank you for showing up and being here um, I tried to get my acts together so I could see what you were doing at 830 today and I just could not make it so uh, I apologize for that but the additional, um, the additional thing that I wanted to show you, let's see if I can go here. Okay. I'm actually, I've got Google Slides open and I have uh, comments available. And it's basically called a Q&A app. But I don't want to make it a Q&A issue. I want to make it a comment issue and so one of the things that I'm experimenting with is like Lowell Ann Fulsang makes a comment in slides and if I copy and paste it into the the uh, comment section and submit it I can then go to my control panel and present this to everybody and then if I go to the 
slides display, I can display what she has uh, commented in our comment stream from the inside of Unified Chat. And this reproduction that you're looking at here is about the closest uh, facsimile to comment tracker that I've been able to find. So it very well might be something that we can learn to assimilate if we can perfect the perfect the process. So this is a comment that I made earlier and I was able to store that aside. And I was uh, telling everybody in my comment, initial one when I came into the green room today, if you can read this message, you are either in today's green room or viewing on the unified chat page. And after the, the event is uh, over, you can see the chat before, during, and after the live presentation. So it's all, re all uh, archived and still good. So one of the things that I'll do is I'll be looking through the chat stream today and occasionally posting something that someone says. But of course, once again, uh, to, do, to really do this properly, I think I would take, um, I would definitely need an assistant and someone, someone um, monitoring the chat separately so that I wouldn't have to do it because it's, it's a lot of work. And so to really do justice to the people who are, are discussing things and commenting in the stream, I would definitely need an assistant. So we're gonna be working on that. So uh, anyway, the comment stream's working fine. We have our three viewers and the show is on. And by the way, Karen couldn't get in for whatever reason. Uh, I'm not sure, but um, I'm so sorry, Karen, that we weren't able to make that uh, work that out. But anyway, I wanted to talk about a concept that is prevalent in my book regarding the, uh, sorry, I'm kind of just, well, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm learning how to use these tools. So it's can be very hectic. But what, what I wanted to cover a subject called deliver what you promise. And the reason that I wanted to cover this today is they say in internet marketing, you make promises to the people. And whatever it is that you promise them, say you're going to deliver something and say, I've got this... Uh, ebook that I, you will deliver if you sign up or a, you know a, a guarantee of some kind or basically some some kind of a promise in your presentation whatever it is you promise you must deliver and as soon as you don't deliver you've lost a client so one of the things that I wanted to show um, I did an entire program about a few days ago on Liam Austin's presentation where he says, uh, join up here, we're gonna talk about video uh, marketing and we're gonna give you all these tools and all these videos and all this stuff. And so he basically has you sign up and click links and goes, you are one click away from, and they apply imply that you're one click away from a discovery and all this grand stuff that they're going to give you and there's a freebie involved and, and so forth. The problem was when I clicked through, I was on click 11 and I still hadn't received anything. Now, do I think that Liam's program was of value? I believe it was, but I believe that his focus was monetizing people and getting them to spend $87. And then he broke it down into, like, if you can't afford this $87, we'll break it down into three payments of $37. But even at that point, in discovering that he had a payment plan, I still didn't know anything about the value of what he was delivering. And the, the point that I want to make is, number one, if you tell people you're one click away from something, they better have something of the discovery after one click. You must deliver that. You have to give them something. And if you don't, then you're just pressure sales selling them. So 11 clicks down the way, I discovered that the, I had still had, had no value out of Liam's presentation. So basically, I wasn't able to successfully do what I thought I would be doing, 
when I first opened his email and first went to his web page and clicked the first click. So he never delivered to, for me based on what he promised in the very start. So I'm really, really big on this delivering what you promise. If you say you're going to give the people something, figure out how to deliver it and give them value now. Don't mess around. Don't ask them to jump through hoops. Deliver it now. Now, there's an, another marketer out there that I uh, I really think that this guy really great stuff. And his name is Brian Kramer. Now, Brian Kramer is right now promoting this thing that happened to him and that becomes a really mark of a, of a, of a product manager and uh, a, a pro, an, an authority in the subject. And he basically claims 15,000 subscribers in 30 days. And when you think of something like that, you go, oh my God, you know, that, that's, a, that's a great success story if you can get 30,000 subscribers over any period of time. But in 30 days, that's a profound statement. But the thing is, you have to understand that w with that, um, Brian Kramer has been around for decades. He's one of the biggest San Francisco marketers in one of the fastest growing consolidations in marketing that San Francisco has to offer. So, of course, if he has an outreach that he puts out to his people, which mailing list may be or the contact ability for for Brian Kramer could be tens and 15,000, could be hundreds of thousands of people because he just knows so many people and he's so connected. And he's the he's one of the ultimate pros in the industry. So he puts it out to his contacts and all of a sudden he's got 15,000 subscribers to a concept that may convert in, into buyers. And he claims that he gets a 20% open rate with his mailing list and a 10% click rate, which means if you, if you extrapolate that out, if he has 30,000, I mean, pardon me, 15,000 subscribers, that means 3,000 people are are opening the email and approximately 1500 people are clicking the links to go to wherever he wants them to go now the percentage wise if a, if some, some small percentage of those people buy even 10 percent then 150 people have bought some plan that he offered and he's going to make some money at it because when these guys put something for sale it's usually in the hundreds or thousands of dollars, but let's say it's just a hundred bucks and 150 people buy, then he just made $10,500. So it's very easy for them to talk about their success stories. And then for us on the, on the receiving end of this message, we're thinking, wow, gee, I've got about 500 people in my circles and I've got, uh, my email list is even smaller and I don't have these people. But if I could just get my list up to 15,000 subscribers, I could have the type of success story that they have. Well, the first misnomer is that you cannot just build and have 15,000 subscribers just because you follow some formula. Now, Brian Kramer's got a formula, but he's also got years and years in, in the business and a lot of connectivity. And those relationships are what give him the power to generate 15,000 subscribers. So you have to take these things in with a grain of salt. Now, where I commend Brian is in his philosophy of marketing. He talks about give, 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 and maybe get. In other words, five, five times the objective of getting something out of his marketing he wants to give so it's mostly a give process and then if he happens to receive something on the back end of that then that's okay I mean that's not it's not a matter of wiping your brow and saying I'm so glad we made money you have to assume that the result is that you will make sales so and in the marketing philosophy of in it mobile and R&D hotline, I'll take it a step further. You have to completely give up on the concept of the return on the investment when you are giving. And you have to give freely and you have to remove the negativity 
of sitting there and wondering, gee, I wonder if anyone might buy the product. Because as soon as you do that, you put the negative vibe on your own pitch. And believe it or not, in this world of, of unified spirit, people can pick up on that. And in part of being authentic and genuine, if you're going to give something, you have to give. I tell this story about the concept of the, of the silent gift. And the, the, it's basically a lesson that I learned from reading a couple of books when I was younger and what my dad said to me when I was like 15 years of age. If you expect something when you give something to someone, it's not a gift. It's a trade or you're buying or, you know, it's, a, it's got an attachment. But when you give something, it's basically you give something without the expectation of any kind of return. And that's the way you should style your marketing for internet marketing. But you add one thing to it. If you give in this fashion, the benefits that you have are automatic. And you just have to have some faith and believe that. Now, that's what I think. Molly, what do you think? <laughs> You have any comment on that type of philosophy? Yeah, um, I've been busy trying to get Karen into the green room, and it's just not happening. Um, she's trying to join us from her iPad, and apparently there's some type of disconnect between her device and Hangouts. So it's kind of a, I don't know, it's a new problem. So I'm definitely going to bring that up in the Hangouts for him. Um, yeah. But my thoughts on that is. I agree 100%. That's actually how I built my business. Um, when I first started, I didn't have a lot of resources. I definitely did not have any. I had zero coming in, nothing. And I thought, well, what do I have? Well, I have information. I know a lot of stuff uh, about marketing and websites. And I thought, well, why don't I share what I know? And so part of my marketing strategy was to use social media. And through using that medium, I was able to t take some of my knowledge base and just have like a daily tip of blogs, websites, um, marketing, digital marketing, AdWords, analytics, a variety of different topics. And what I found was by sharing the information that I had is I created connections with people. Meaning if somebody down the road, they had a question about a website or AdWords or whatever, um, they would come back to me and say, hey, I know you've talked about this before. I need some help with this. And typically I would, you know, do a pro bono, you know, let them take a test drive kind of deal, um, give them a little taste of what they would get if they decided to hire me. And then ultimately that's how I was able to win them over as a client because I was able to take that, that uh, a little amount of effort, kind of the gift, if you will, and say, hey, well, you know, I've done this for you. If you'd like to continue using me as your service provider, then, you know, we can make some type of arrangement. Uh, typically, most of my clients, um, I finance them, meaning instead of them paying everything all up front, uh, I work on a payment plan with them. And I created this pricing model because it creates a win-win situation, meaning the client gets the work that they need to succeed online, but at the same time, I win the client over. Now, I may not get everything up front, but as long as they stay on this payment plan, then it turns out to be a win-win situation. So, but in terms of, of giving information, that's uh, one reason why I've participated with the uh, the Google Rising Star Top Contributor Program with Google. Um, you know, I, I think that if you as a user have information about certain topics or products and you're able to share that information, uh, inform people that, hey, you're knowledgeable about this certain subject, but it's actually going to help your reputation, meaning people are going to know that, well, she's an expert in this particular, or he's a uh, an expert in this particular uh, area of expertise. So if I have a question or I need to barter with them or hire them to provide services for my business, then that's going to create that opportunity. Thank you, Molly. And I really appreciate what you're saying because uh, this is something that I believe in deeply. So I talk about it every, you know, once a month or every other month. And um, I get fed up with what I see on the, on out in the marketplace from people who are advertising and showing their insincerity in marketing and insincerity in what they deliver. And it just bugs the crap out of me. So one of the things that I am adamant about that we should be analyzing exactly what it is we give, the reasons why, and whether or not it's a, a genuine gift or not. 
So um, Bill Graham mentions, if you are giving and expecting something in return, you are doing business, not charity. So that, that's exactly what my sentiment is on that. And let's not fool each other when we talk about that. If you're giving because you're going to get something, then you're doing business. So I don't know whether you can call that giving or not or try to fool the people into saying you're giving when they know dang well that you're doing that to entice them or extract something from the listener, from the client. And I just, I, I just uh, don't believe in that. And it goes completely against what I believe. And so the last thing about this marketing stuff is um, he has a um, – I'm, I'm back on Brian Kramer. He got 15,000 subscribers. And that basically uh, talks about – I mean, it, it equates out to something that's reasonably wealthy in an outreach. If you get 15,000 people to subscribe, you can, make, you can make millions of bucks off of that. That's, there, there's a potential to do that. And it's it's a numbers game, but it's all how you dis design it, how you off make your offer, what kind of a package you offer, whether you're having webinars a week or one week stays where you teach people something, who knows? But there's ways to make millions of dollars. By the same token, to scale it down for the user, the the people among us who are struggling with a a few hundred contacts and trying to build our mailing list, keep the mailing list personal make sure that you're in touch with these people and that they're communicating with you anytime they ask a question answer and so forth because I will quote or s paraphrase a quote from Jimbo Marshall who was on our show last year and that you can make a decent living with an email list of a thousand people you don't need 15,000 you don't need hundreds of thousands if you have a thousand people you can make a living selling and promoting quality services and products so it's I not like you need that's a good point Ron I just want to quickly interject something that you know he may have 15,000 subscribers that's great but what number out of that 15,000 are a paying customer and I look at it like this I'd rather focus more on quality and content and know I've got 10 clients that's gonna pay me a thousand dollars a month or five hundred dollars a month, then to send out a huge blast and oh, I got thirty thousand subscribers. That's to me. I mean, it's it seems exciting. It's like wow, that's a big number. But at the end of the day, I worry about my bottom line, which is how much money is going into my business account. And so, with that being said, I think as a business owner, we need to focus more on that bottom number versus that extravagant, oh, I've got you know, 50,000 people signed up this year. Well, that's that's great, but how many people out of that 50,000 is paying you for your services? Yeah, and uh, uh, I, it, when, when people go for the number of people in their mailing list, to me, they're playing a numbers game. And if they're playing a numbers game, I'm almost certain that they are not focusing on the quality and of their own service or product and when they're not then they're out you know it's like gee what can I find that somebody manufactures that I can buy cheap and sell high and that that also is not my style so we're gonna display another comment from Bill Graham because he's prolific with these great sayings so I'll show that in a moment but um in as much as uh, as um, there are marketers and there are marketers. The people who are worried about the numbers on their mailing list are probably not really focused on how good their product is. And I, the, the reassessment of what's going on is that if you really focus on, on the quality of your own product, you're miles ahead of then whether you, you focus on the numbers of the people that you are, are, are uh, contacting so the big difference is let's work on the, the quality as as Molly says an old message that bears repeating give to build your authority through relationship rather than stuffing them through a funnel and that expresses it pretty dang clearly I'm really behind that you know it's like 
the the people who come up to you and sell you the funnel concept they're going to make money off of you because you're buying the funnel concept but the problem is they didn't talk to you from the very start about how good your product or service is how much you're going to support the concept of your sale how you're going to treat the client it's all about the client so if we don't concern ourselves with that first and make sure we're we're delivering value to the client that funnel doesn't matter and people are going to wonder why am I not making more money well there's a good reason for that so anyway um, that's my marketing discussion getting that off my chest uh, once once again so I'll probably be good for another month or two and sorry I was uh, as broken up as it was because we're dealing with the uh, the technical side of what's going on and I'm really sorry that Karen wasn't able to join us but Molly had a the, a statement she wanted to add to what's going on here. Yeah, um, regarding Karen, I'm trying to get her in, and uh, I guess we've broken Hangouts this afternoon slash morning because she she's clicking the link and she actually sent me a screenshot showing me what she sees, and she it, it, she's in the room by herself. Um, so I don't know. That's different. I'm gonna run that by uh, people over in the Hangouts help forum and figure out what's going on with that. Um, I wonder. But, I wonder if there's a, there's a possibility of, in an iPad, clearing cache from the memory of the search and then reinstituting the, the link again to see if it it catches. Because it might be defaulting yeah. to the original link, that's which true, was my fault. Point. It was the wrong link, so she might try clearing cache. Um, but going back to what you were saying about you know. Pro, well, pro bono, you know, sample. I mean, that that concept goes back thousands of years where, you know, people, before they would buy, they would have a sample of something. And, you know, before you want that sample, you want to know, well, am I going to trust that brand? Am I going to trust that uh, product or service? And one of the ways as business owners that we can build loyalty and build our brand awareness is by becoming a, a, a thought leader you know authority on the subjects that we're good at and then when we have that reputation you'll actually find that instead of you looking for work people will seek you out because you've got that authority over that certain subject or service or product that you offer and when you come full circle like that when people are actually seeking you out then you've accomplished what you set out to do which is to build your brand and I'll tell you a little story. Um, back when I first started using Hangouts, I really didn't have any clue what I was doing. Um, I had to figure it out on my own. And a few of the industry leaders that I sought out originally were Guy Kawasaki, Mari Smith, Joe Barnes. There's a few of them out there. And I'm thinking, well, if these people were able to build themselves, to build their reputation, to where people are seeking them out to speak at you know all these different conferences and uh, events. Why can't I do that? And I figured out slowly that what it was going to take is it was going to take a lot of work, and it was going to take a lot of persistence, and it was going to take being very diligent and persistent um, in terms of getting information about myself and my particular areas of expertise. And what I found is that's exactly what happened. It took me probably, I'd say about a year, year and a half before it kind of came full circle for myself. But I would be posting on Facebook, just my normal daily quote, post, tip, trick, whatever. And what I found happening is somebody in my network or my audience, they'd, they'd say, hey, I need a website. And people would actually stop and say, hey, you should contact Molly. She talks about building websites all the time. And when your network actually promotes you as an expert and whatever service or product you offer, then you really don't even need to promote yourself anymore because you built yourself to such a platform where people trust you as a trusted authority or expert or thought leader that work will actually find you. And that's actually where I've kind of come full circle with, with my business is I don't really even, I get headhunters call me all the time, send me emails. Uh, I get job offers. I have people regularly want 
me to come work for them. And I tell them, I don't, I don't need your, I don't, I don't need the job. I've got plenty of work. And we I don't, don't, and need I don't you mean here. that. I don't mean that. And I mean, I try to be quiet about it, but I've just, you know, like I, I've got work for the next, you know, six months. I, I don't need any, you know, any additional jobs. Um, one thing I would say though, is if you're still at that point where you're building yourself and this is something I actually employed for myself, um, instead of just going out there randomly trying to find work, go to those headhunters, go to those job sites and look for jobs that like maybe you're a blogger or maybe you specialize in AdWords. Go look for those job listings where they're advertising for the services because a lot of those companies are thinking, hey, I need to hire an employee to come and work under me. Whereas if you approach that business and say, hey, I'm a specialist in AdWords or blogging or whatever it is you do, and you approach them and say, hey, well, if you outsource this to me as a freelancer, not only are you going to get the work that you need done, but you're not going to have to pay me benefits. You're not going to have to incur the expense of housing me in your office. And kind of turn the situation around and make them see it from your perspective. One thing I would add to that is you know, make sure and have some examples of your work, like a portfolio, case study, something that they can see that, hey, this person actually knows what they're talking about, they, or maybe some testimonials. Um, when I first went to business, I, I had a terrible time uh, because I would approach people and they'd say, oh, well, I hired so-and-so and they took my money and skipped town. I thought, oh, that's a big problem. How am I going to get it worked. Uh, Shyster is out there, you know, <laughs> basically yeah. not being honest. And so uh, I had to really quickly come up with a plan to overcome that. And, and my plan was bonus. So I just did a few little jobs here or there to build up my portfolio. I always made sure to get, get feedback from these people. Because if you're doing a pro bono, if there's a really good chance they're going to give you a positive feedback. Hey, Molly did a great job. Hey, your t-shirt design was awesome. And then when you approach these businesses, then you'll have the tools that you need to say, hey, uh, I see you've got a job listing here. I understand you want an employee. Think of it from this perspective. If you hire me as a freelancer, I can, and I have people actually to this day still ask me for references. In fact, the last client I just uh, picked up um, asked for three references. And I'm like, sure, here, call these people up. Please call them because I know they're going to say, hey, Molly does a great job. You want to hire them out? In fact, Funny story, I actually gave her one of my competitors. So this is a guy, he does exact exact same thing I do, okay? He told this lady, he goes, you would be crazy not to hire Molly. He goes, I go to her when I need help or I have questions, and I do the exact same thing she's doing. So if I'm asking questions and advice from her, you probably want to work with them. you can have other people in your industry back you up and hoist you up and say yes this is the person you want to work with then you really have come full circle so I just wanted to share some of those are just some of the strategies that I've used to build my business um, and hopefully you, you benefit from them very very helpful stuff and I'm really thank you for that testimonial on that um, we have a newcomer that's watching the that as far as I know and his, his name is Steve C. And he asks a question. So let's uh, see what that question was. He's asking, just switch to watching on U Unified Chat from YouTube audio. Now, Tinny, audio now, Tinny, interesting. What is Unified Chat anyway? And I thank you for your question, um, Steve. And Unified Chat is basically a new uh, program online program that's come out recently and it does a little bit of a wrapper for hangouts on air and allows us to have this conversational uh, comment stream on the right hand side of the screen that you could probably see if you're in the unified chat you can see this the comments going on and from all the experimenting we've done it is about the best comment stream that I've found and uh, there are there are problems with it I can't display comments in in the comment tracker traditionally, but as you can see, I was able to display your comment through some manipulations. It's not easy, but it it does work. And so, if the objective is to 
produce a show of some kind, these things are possible. It's just that you are kind of hard pressed to do it all by yourself. You want you don't want to do this all by yourself. But for the viewer's experience, if I were more proficient at it as far as getting the comments up on the screen the way it's easy enough to do, but it's hard to do when you're trying to host the show, uh, the concept of unified chat and displaying the comments through Google Slides works quite well. And so what this is all geared towards the user experience, so not just the convenience of the show or what we're trying to promote or whatever it is. Uh, we are learning in our experience and we are sampling new technology and we're pairing the pairing the technologies together to see what exactly how good a show we can produce for you people. So that's one of the things. And uh, so thank you for asking about unified chat. I don't know about the tinny audio. Um, the various connections that go on in the filters that are happening. Oh no, you kidding? Oh, she is. She Finally. It. <laughs> so, anyway, speaking of technology, we finally have Karen. Karen, what do you think our problem was in trying to get you into the the hangout today? I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me yes. at all? Yeah, I can hear you. So I think it's something is going on with the iPad because I can't get on. I I was sitting in a room by myself feeling alone. Oh Aww. no. <laughs> I think it's the device too, Karen. I'm I'm gonna actually pop that uh, little scenario over to the hangouts to some of the TCs over there and see what they have to say about it. Cause that was really weird. Um she even backed out and went in and cleared a cache and I don't know, it just wasn't yeah, happening. I mean, yeah, I mean I could basically click on the link and, and I j I'm just in a room by myself. That's weird. Oh, well. <laughs> um, Talk about question, Twilight Zone. To answer the question about the tinny aud audio from our viewer, um, mm -hmm. go Google uh, Hangouts Help Forum and look for, or you can just Google the Hangouts Audio Troubleshooter tool. So when you go and you use the troubleshooter, it'll go through a series of prompts that will help you figure out why your audio is tinny. So I just yeah. wanted to answer that question that real quick. Good. And I know that when I'm switching platforms from one to another, quite on, often it changes the connective device where it's actually tracing the sound. And even coming in and out of Hangouts, sometimes it defaults to the default sound or the communication setting, and sometimes to the more advanced uh, particular settings for the audio devices that I am using. So it, there, there's, there's no set pattern that keeps itself when you're switching from from platform to platform. So when you switch to unified chat, it very well could have reset something. So that is a possibility. But anyway, thank you for asking and I appreciate that. We have uh, five people in the viewing audience today and I appreciate you being here. <laughs> yeah. And Cameron may be number five. I mean, maybe, uh, number five, maybe, no, maybe, maybe number six. I mean, who could, who knows what I am at this moment, but yeah. Yeah, and I'm not sure how they, they record who's watching and how they assess everybody. So there's, there's, a, there's no telling. <laughs> but uh, Lowell Ann Fulsang was made, able to make it back in. We still have Bill Graham, WeWake, and uh, Steve. They're all out there. So thank you very much for showing up and being with us. What's that, Karen? That's my Google Local Guides pass into the building. Oh wow! So this is uh, just not to take up too much time. I don't know what what your plans are, Roland. I could go into it, but I just came back from the uh, first ever Local Guide Summit in San Francisco, and we got to go to San Francisco offices of Google and also the Googleplex. Tell you what, let's hit that in a second. But I, I definitely need to deliver what I promised. And okay. not delay until next week and the next week. Right now, we're going to do a quick screen share of my computer or one of my screens because I want to show you what I do with my uh, various uh, slides. And, and I'll give you a brief demonstration of a thing called um, AeroSnap. Or now it's been shortened to Snap. And basically what Snap does is it allows you to easily, if you if you learn how to control it, easily snap your windows that you're looking 
at to a to a half a half screen viewing image and so you can split your screen between two browsers fairly easily now this may not be very practical when you're using a, a 15 inch or even a 11 inch laptop or something like that because your viewing area becomes so small so i'm going to show you what i would do if i was on a laptop and how i organize my screen but just to, to display for you how snap works or they used to be called arrow snap in the uh windows 7 and window is 8 age and I, I never really used it much but windows 10 it brought it back to me again and so i kind of work around it although the, the thing to understand about snap is you can turn snap off so maybe that's the first thing that i will do in showing you what's going on here um i'm not sure whether you'll be able to see this or not let's see yeah if we go to um actually control panel i will roland you got that kind of tunneled effect going on right now yeah when, it's you, show, when you show your screens it's like you can't really see anything unfortunately yeah well, that's okay because the main thing is that uh oh i guess let's see i'm okay i believe you can see the um control panel that i opened up here in my windows uh control panel can and you make it can you make your box bigger make the box, box bigger because it's kind of small i think you click on the the middle button up there on the top right yeah can i can expand just, it to expand, to expand it that's perfect yeah you just click on the top bar and that's kind of how i do it but it, the the stuff inside it is still as small as it was so the box is bigger but that isn't I would have to actually magnify my screen, which, uh, you know, then I'll have to go back and fix that again. But so the main thing that I want to show is that to adjust the on off ability of snap, because some people say, I don't want that thing to snap. Every time I move my browser around, suddenly it's full screen and hides everything that I'm doing, or it grabs onto the left side of the screen and the right side becomes a viewing case for all the rest of the windows and how do i handle it so you have to be able to control it and if you go to ease of access and then um, go to the setting of how change how your mouse works it's a really really small link but go to change how your mouse works and you click on that and then you have all these settings that come up and what you want to look for is down in near the bottom, there are a couple of check boxes. And the uh, the one is activate a window by hovering over it with your mouse. And I would never do that myself, but you will, might want to experiment with that. But if you check the bottom one, it says prevent windows from being automatically arranged when you move to the edge of the screen. And so that if you don't want the snap effect to happen, when you move, you drag your window to the edge of a screen or the top of the screen or whatever, then you can check this and it'll prevent that from happening. But I'm going to uncheck it now because I want to demonstrate when it is happening, what's happening. Okay, so let's put that away for a second. And uh, I know that this becomes a bit of a problem here. But what we'll do is like this window that's doing the mirror effect, I'm going to snap it to half screen. And the way you do this is like you, you drag your mouse over the top bar uh, just above all the URL section and everything so that now you can move the window wherever you want on your, on your, your screen. And you're actually going to move it off the screen somewhat and keep the mouse down the left click and keep dragging until the mouse pointer itself touches the edge of the screen. Because when it touches the edge of the screen, then you get this shadow effect or a ghost effect on the right-hand side of the screen. Now, I hope you can see that, and you can let me know if uh, you're seeing this. Like, I'm off of it now. I'm on it now. Off, on. So. When it does that, it's registering that you're going to snap to the edge of the screen. And for instance, if the same thing happens to the edge of the screen over here, if I do it on the left, the on will basically outline the right half of the screen or off. 
on off so you need to re you learn how to recognize what's happening with that and i probably would do better if i didn't use the screen that had the the mirror effect going on so let me go to this and so we have this window and if i were to snap this window i grab the top bar in the blank area above the the address and the tabs and as soon as i touch the edge of the screen i hope you can see the how it registers there's a ghost effect that pops in and becomes viewable over there and so if i were to let go of the edge of this tab right where i see the ghost it suddenly snaps to the left side of the screen encompassing approximately or exactly half the screen and then everything else that i had open thank god it wasn't <laughs> some porn site or something who knows <laughs> uh something i didn't want to show you whatever and uh, that, but everything else on my, my bo on both my monitors, becomes selective in a, a, uh, in a, in an array in the other half of the screen. So, so here we have uh, split on the left hand side, and everything else as far as my other options on the right. But let's say that, let's say that I wanted to blow this hangout up again, and place it on the other half of the screen. If I wanted to make sure I'm on the exact half, I drag it again until the ghost line shows up, and then I let it go, and then I have both my monitors. I mean, both my tabs open. This one shows the unified chat display, and this one is in the Hangout itself. So I'm wondering, uh, Molly and Karen, are you able to see that pretty clearly? Yes. Yeah, I can see everything great. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now, the, the one other feature that I wanted to show you is that this basically splits your screen exactly in half with the tab on one side open, and the tab on the other side open. However, if you mouse in the middle between the two tabs, there's a very interesting effect that can happen. Let me see if I can do it. No, that didn't do it. If I drag the middle line between the two, if you can see what's happening, what, what, what are you witnessing right now? You're expanding the screen. No, I'm actually not expanding the screen. I'm changing the differential between the two windows. You're winding, so, you're, you're winding one and the other one's shrinking. Right. With one movement, I'm able to change the differential. And I open up the other one bigger, and I make the other one closed more. So if I'm trying to watch something on the main screen on the left, I can still have my Hangout window with uh, my green room and all my activity and it even takes the conversation that's going on and bumps it down below the video so i can still contain all of this at the same time all on the screen so when it comes to viewing what i'm doing i have many options and the windows uh the windows uh automatic snap is actually kind of a fun and a valuable tool if you use it right so I'm going to disengage that right now and uh, take my windows apart and show you uh, something different. Now, one of the things, let's see, where did this come from? Oh, yeah, okay. So let me re-engage this back together. Okay, so when I'm usually running a, a program, I like my green room a little bit bigger, but not necessarily that big. Mm -hmm. But I'll run it on maybe two-thirds of my screen. But the problem with that is if I'm running two-thirds of the screen, I need a couple of other windows open to access information or various different facilities to actually run my event. So this way, I've got another tab over here that I can always go to by clicking on it. Or I can go to my Gmail and all my contacts by doing that or I can do notes uh, notes from my Yahoo tab and read my notes for the day and then I can jump back into the jump back into the event page um, just basically ping-ponging among the three windows without getting lost now one of the things that I find all the time is I'll be working with someone and, and directing them or we're doing a screen share or working on their computer and we have a, they're, they're sharing their screens with me 
and then suddenly the the person on the other end of the conversation says oops you disappeared well no i didn't disappear i'm still there on the computer they're hearing my voice they just cannot see my the projection of my camera and the problem is simply the 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 browser that they're looking at for the whatever information that we're covering is covering the window that shows my face and one of the most frustrating things for me is for somebody to be on the other side saying where'd you go i don't know how to find you again so once and for all here's how you uh, stack your windows in your browsers so that you never get lost so part of it is uh, is a geometry thing part of it is a, a is a geography thing and so you have to set your windows so that they do not take up the whole screen because if you do this let's say i take the whole screen with this one browser i'll expand there now who knows what's behind it who knows what's behind that browser i don't know but if you, you're looking at that and going wait a minute where's the where's the web page that i was looking at you're not going to find it by looking at this page so you have to be able to to make it adjustable so that it takes up space on your on your desktop but does not take up the whole space you can make it really big but it's got to not be full screen so let's say it takes up that much of the screen but if i want to come back to my youtube browser where i was doing something in youtube i simply go over here and click on the browser so my mouse is down here i'm going to go click and make sure that you do not click on a link because then you take yourself right away from where, where wherever you were but i'll just click on that and now i'm in my youtube browser where i can go attend to whatever or if i'm directing someone else to do it they can go to this page and make the the adjustments that they, that they need to for whatever instructional and then as soon as they're done doing that they just come over here and click on the the hangout window again and they're back in the hangout so basically click on the youtube click on the hangout click on the youtube click on the hangout uh you never have to get lost if you know where to look so one of the things that i do is i'll have at least three things open i will have the hangout window which is the the hangout on the right with a mirror effect and then this this page over here will be a data sheet or something that is going on that i need to to use for the presentation of the of the hangout and then i also have a constant stream of contacts coming in which could be accessed from from my uh, gmail because i've got all my contacts right there and if somebody contacts me i can literally um access them from there but then also i've taken it a step further and i have the google um, desktop app for hangouts and so if i click the button i have that si situated on another screen because i'm using dual screens and literally on the two screens i probably have about nine windows open and then on the nine windows i've got multiple tabs so i probably got about 50 tabs open right now but i i hope that this uh, gives people an idea how they can organize their screens to be efficient for running watching hangouts and doing live streaming because we've talked about uh, recently live streaming where we can only watch the video in one window and then we have to have the conversation situated in a different window and when you do that it's a problem because everything shrinks down small and then where where's a conversation going but the way to handle it is with windows staggered and sized appropriately so it becomes simply a management issue not a matter of not knowing where everything is or how to find people or how to find your information use overlapping staggered windows what do, what do you think girls are there any anything that you want to add to this uh i i mean some helpful tips on how to you know keep be organized um which is always good i know myself i usually have five or six tabs open two three programs running in the background and uh it can get a little overwhelming but yeah some interesting uh some some good tips there appreciate that no problem so 
we're gonna let we're gonna let Karen turn on her mic on and say a last few words. We're gonna go ahead and move on and let her wrap up the show with some words about uh, her uh, Google. Uh, um, uh, what do you call it? The the Google, Google, <laughs> guys, Google local right? guys summit. Yes. Okay. Hello. Uh, hello. Sorry about that, guys. We had a little trouble getting on today. Uh, I think it was kind of a journey across many continents to be here. Um, it was actually, it was really actually quite good. Um, Seventy-five, including myself, local guides from all over the world. There are five million local guides now, um, as the programs just started about a year ago, and it was an amazing experience. So maybe next week or so, Roland, we can kind of get into it because there's just a lot of information. Um, but we did get to go and visit the Google, the Googleplex, and we also did visit the Google offices, and we did have quite a few speakers um, from Googlers talking about Google Maps and kind of the future of what they see in the program. And um, there was actually, um, so far, things are kind of rolling out with press coverage, and there is going to be a lot of um, media in terms of um, social media, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram with uh, things going to be posted uh, with the summit going on because we had camera crew and video and a bunch of people following us around all over the city and all over uh, the Googleplex. Very cool. Well, I know that this is an accomplishment for, for you and you have uh, been working on it for the last, almost the last couple of years. But as a teaser, I wanted to show this to Molly. Oh Who's my that? god. Do you know who that is? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Do you know who this is? Yeah, that is awesome, Karen. That is crazy. <laughs> Do, you know, Do you know who it is? Who is it? No, who is it? Benoit. Really? Yeah. Oh my god, that's awesome. You got to meet him in person? Yeah, because he was a Google local guide also. It's kind of interesting because it was uh, him and then a guy from Australia, Paul, because I'm also in the Google Plus Create community. And it was just so random. It's like, oh, my God, I know you. One of my friends, uh, his name's Matty Jada. Um, uh -huh. He was out there. I don't know if you remember him. He's, I asked him if he remembers meeting you. And he's like, yeah, I think I remember being introduced to her. So he, um, I was just posting something on Facebook and because uh, I'm going out there in a week and a half. And he's like, oh, I just got back from there. And I'm like. Did you meet Karen? And he goes, yeah, I think I remember being introduced to her. So that's cool that you got to meet Ben Wabe. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, he's wild. <laughs> <laughs> well, you both and, look pretty and, wild and, there. And, and this is before alcohol, okay? Just before drinks. This is We did this while we were sober. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's funny. So uh, people are commenting out there. Lowell Anna's mentioning that she's a local guide also and that uh, – Bill Graham, yes, me too. Apparently, he's a, he's a local guide, I guess. Also, I didn't know that, Bill. And hey, then uh, I'm a local guide. I'm just not. I'm not level five yet. I'm still working on mine, but it's fun. So, I like being a local guide. So yeah. I think that, I think that we'll talk about adding more to the uh, itinerary on local guides next week, and we'll talk about that. Also, there's a very good possibility that we will be featuring a gentleman named Vinay. Higher Math next week, and he is the founder and creator of a program called Chat Test. No, is that right? Anyway, I probably have the, the, the name wrong. I'll, I'll write it up in the next week's description. And uh, basically, it's a screen share program that records whatever's on your screen and with various options. And puts your a circle with your head in the lower left hand corner of what you're recording so that you can do a tutorial and still be live in the recording and i think it's a great um it's a great tool and i'm going to be sampling how to use it a few few times this week and he may be our guest next week so we'll have have him uh, describe what his goals are for the program what the next development mm -hmm. stages might be and how valuable this tool is because when he started explaining it, I was pretty amazed. So, listen, I know that it's been a, a, a kind of a weird show. 
<laughs> and I've been stuttering over myself like a lame duck and uh, quacking away. But part of this is us experimenting with the various tools that are at our disposal and trying to cre create eventually a better Saturday morning marketing smarties show. So thank you very much for dealing with us. Roland, ahead, can, I, can I add one more thing? Um, I don't know if the audience, if anyone's actually using Hootsuite, but there's actually, um, they're looking at maybe if we, if they would want to add Google Plus as part of an, you know, it's a way to basically schedule. And I do have a link that if you can sign up and just, uh, you know, voice your opinion that please put Google Plus into Hootsuite. Um, the more that we speak about it, the more this is going to happen. Yeah, that sounds good. So I'll I'll put that in the I guess comment stream somewhere. It just you just have to point out to me, and I'll I'll, I'll pass yeah. you the link. Yeah, one of the uh, things that we should acknowledge involving this unified chat is that when I'm setting up the event and I have not started the event, we wake and I were talking an hour before the event, so it records the conversation in the chat room much the same way. That I used to in the event pages in Google Plus event pages. And during the event, records the chat. After the event, it records the chat. Now, they don't have a really good system for for reconnecting with this this event page, but you can record the URL and feature it wherever you want and always come back to this page. So and watch the replay and then continue on commenting in the stream it's not as direct commenting as plus naming people in the google plus post but it's pretty good so one of the benefits are that we have a good comment stream during before and after the the live show presentation and i think that maybe we'll be building upon that and is there a way to embed this in one's website not yet i believe um Lowell and that was a really good question so part of the strategy for me is going to be basically driving people to the unified chat page for right now and experimenting on as to whether that is a viable uh, experience as far as where to conduct the live show but it most certainly doesn't do one important thing and that is contribute to the traffic on your website so we'll see where the crossover is and maybe there's a bridge to cross so that's about it for the day. Um, Molly, did you have anything to wrap us up? Um, just wanted to quickly mention that uh, on September the 28th at 9 a.m. Pacific time that the Google Partners Connect event is going to be broadcast live from Google headquarters. They're going to be focusing on mobile this time. So I think as business owners, uh, if you get a chance to check it out, uh, if you'd like, I can send you the link and people can sign up RSVP for it, and then you just show up the day of the event and watch it. Sounds cool. So we can we can add that to the roster if anyone's interested. And just to mention, Karen posted the link to Hootsuite for the subject of talking to Hootsuite about incorporating Google Plus into their program options. So that's it for the day, and I just wanted to mention that, no, I'm not high-styling it, not trying to break the icon of what Roland looks like. I was just trying to keep the sun from keeping me from seeing the screen today and I forgot to take it off. So that's about it from Saturday Morning Marketing Smarties. Roland signing off, saying bye to Molly and Karen and all the people in the audience. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend.